This is part two in the series of videos that I'm recording for you critiquing the sample research perspectives that I wrote. And so I'm just gonna pick back up where we left off in the first video. So to end the first video, I was pointing out for you how I had included multiple sources in the single parenthetical citation, which is a really useful way of integrating a lot of sources if you have such a limited amount of space as that that you have for the assignment. Because remember that your introduction with literature review is only one and a half to two pages. I told you that I would expect you to have probably one to two introductory paragraphs and then probably three to five literature review paragraphs. So that's not very much space to integrate all of these sources. And again, remember that even though this is a really condensed version, the literature review part of this paper still has to accomplish the same goals as a regular literature review, as the literature review you wrote for assignment three. So you really need to be um, creative and use a variety of ways of getting all of these sources in there in a way that isn't going to slow down the pace of the paper or require you to really go much beyond one and a half to two pages that has been assigned for the introduction with literature review. So picking up where we left off, um, I've just indicated that there is um, there are a lot of studies that show that food insecurity among college students is widespread, both studies that focus on um, you know, universities throughout the United States as well as other countries. Um, and so what I'm going to do then here is I'm going to give an example of one of those studies that addresses how widespread this is. And so specifically I focused on this study that was looking at 410 students at this university in Hawaii. Now, as I've indicated in the comment in the margin here, this is a good way of really concisely indicating methodology. I know the number of participants, I know the site of the data collection. However, I could actually strengthen than this by instead of saying based on their study saying based on their survey right so you want to look for ways to be really concise when explaining the methodology but still being as specific as you can so it's not that what I've written here is bad but again I could be more concise so that the reader knows okay it was a survey because the way that I've left it here the reader doesn't know if it's a survey or some other methodology so again, that's what I'm doing in this sentence. I'm setting up an example of a study demonstrating how widespread food insecurity is among college students. I'm giving that concise summary of methodology, and then I'm giving this concise explanation of the findings. And again, I do have some direct quotation, but that's because there's not really a way for me to summarize or paraphrase this wording here effectively. So again, in this case, it's fine. So when you're writing your own paper, if you're trying to report on a finding or the methodology, and you really just cannot summarize or paraphrase that, um, then it's okay to directly quote, but you really need to limit that direct quoting. All right, so as I continue, I then give another example of a study, this Patton Lopez et al. study. Um, and so what I'm trying to do here is that even though I have really limited space, I do want to be able to give multiple examples of the point that I've set up in the topic sentence. And so, you know, I'm saying studying a comparable number of students, we've got 354 compared to the 410. Um, I'm giving specifics about the site where data were collected. It's a mid-sized rural university in Western Oregon. I specify in this case, it was a questionnaire. We know when it was administered. So, you know, you do want to try and have multiple examples of any point that you're making because this is how we synthesize, right? So even though earlier I highlighted for you the value of being able to list multiple sources in a single parenthetical citation, you still do need to, in some of the content of this literature review at least, you still do need to do this synthesis within the content. So don't only rely on listing multiple sources in a parenthetical citation. So in this sentence, I finish by explaining what the finding was, the major finding, right? And then I've got this sentence here that basically acts as sort of an overview summary to kind of tie this all together. So thus, not only are college students food insecure, but their rates of food insecurity may actually see the rates of food insecurity among the general population. Now here, what I'm doing is I'm giving the limitations because remember that just like with assignment three, that paper that was a literature review, even though this is condensed literature review building with the intro, you still need to identify gaps, laws, limitations. So that is what I am doing in this last sentence. I'm indicating that we had imbalanced samples, we had low response rates in some of these studies, and so we can't really generalize the findings because these results may be skewed or in some way impacted. And what I've done is I've given evidence to support why I'm saying there were imbalanced samples and low response rates. That's really important because if you don't offer that evidence, then 
your reader is just basically left to either accept what you're saying is true without having any actual proof that it is, or the reader then has to go and look at these sources himself or herself, and your reader really shouldn't have to do that. So if you're saying that there is some kind of gap or flaw or limitation, you need to provide evidence to support why you are making that claim. And I've done that here in this kind of parenthetical notation. So e.g., for example, and then I'm giving the numbers, the breakdown and the participants, so that it's clear that yes, it was an imbalanced sample, and this response rate was really low at only 7%. Now, this next paragraph, which would be the third paragraph of the paper, is continuing the literature review. I've got this transition phrase in addition, because remember that transitions are incredibly important for this paper, just like they were for the literature review. So you do need to use these kind of signal phrases that allow you to link prior content with the new content. So what I'm doing here is I have another topic sentence that focuses on a theme or a pattern across sources. Um, this particular paragraph is going to focus on research that has tried to identify the factors that correlate with food insecurity. And so what I've done, again, to make use of my space is instead of having, you know, one section for one factor, another section or paragraph for another factor, and so on, I'm putting them all together here. So I've got this single sentence that says three of the major factors that have been noted. So employment, income, and then race or ethnicity. So what I've done too is you see that I've got parenthetical citations after each factor to indicate which of my sources were examining that factor as a correlation with food insecurity. Okay, so this is another way that I'm blending my synthesis. All right, students who are employed are shown to be more likely to experience food insecurity than those who are not, and those with lower income. So here I'm doing two of my factors in this sentence. Right? And then I'm using this parenthetical notation to indicate the sources, what they say as far as lower incomes um, are as well. All right, Because obviously I wouldn't really need to provide examples of this point as far as students who are employed are shown to be because we know what employment means, right? Um, but a reader isn't going to know what lower income is, what that exact number is. And so it's really important that I give these examples. All right, some studies also suggest that race is a factor, and then I'm giving an example. And then you'll see that I give another example in this sentence. So again, look for ways that you can combine multiple sources, multiple ideas within single sentences, but just make sure when you're doing that that organizationally it works. You don't want to create run-ons, for example, um, because you're trying to blend multiple sources together in a single sentence. Um, you don't want organizationally for it to look like you're blending things that really just don't make sense together. So this is a great strategy because you have such limited space, but it needs to work. It needs to be effective. Um, if it's not going to be effective to blend multiple sources or ideas together in a single sentence, then separate them out. It's much better for you to take more space and time to discuss your literature than to not do it very well trying to blend a lot together in a short amount of space. All right, and again, I'm ending the paragraph by pointing out limitations that, again, we had small sample sizes and we had low response rates. And um, as I've mentioned in this note here, talking about gout cells limitations, if you remember from the sample literature review I wrote for you, Gaps falls limitations were, for the most part, um, and maybe in all of the cases, um, they were discussed in their individual paragraphs. And because of the length of this section, there's just not really room to do that. So I would say that if in your intro literature review you're putting your gap solves limitations all together, presumably they're going into a single paragraph together. And if that's happening, then my guess would be it's showing up at the end of your intro lit review, um, so right before you move into the next section of the paper. And organizationally, that may work if you're using that to help transition you into saying, okay, well, I'm designing studies, I'm proposing studies. Um, in the following content that attempt to address these gap cell limitations. So I can see how that would work. Um, however, it may work better for you organizationally to embed these gap cell limitations in the paragraphs where you discuss the sources, like you're seeing me do in the sample. So, you know, just like with assignment three, I told you there's really no one way to set up your literature review because it depends so much on your topic and your sources and what you're trying to accomplish um, in terms of the specific points you want to highlight. There's no one set way to structure this. So what I'm trying to do is just give you suggestions, um, but again, I don't have a formula 
formula for you because there's just not a formula for you to follow. What I would say is that if you're really concerned about your organization, you're always welcome to send me an email and you can send me the specific section that you're concerned about and I'll try and give you some feedback if I get that early enough. Now, to end this section, I've got this, um, this paragraph right here, which acts as basically the third paragraph of literature review content. And I'm saying that, you know, we cannot generalize the findings of the limited number of studies um, that examine the effects of food insecurity on college students either. And I'm using this we also transition phrase to link into the prior um, paragraph. So, you know, I ended here by saying we can't generalize these findings beyond these specific studies because of the small sample sizes and low response rates. And then I'm picking back up with that phrasing to help connect these two. Now, I think that it's a fairly effective transition it's not the most effective certainly and if i had more room to develop this content out um, then this probably isn't the way i would quite structure this but it works well enough um, now with that said though you know if i had even more time to work on this paper because i i was trying to get this done as quickly as i could for you guys if i had more time to get this done um, again i probably would would change this up a little bit but it works well enough here all right, I'm using such as to allow me to build in an example, right? Because again, it's really important that you do cite the specific studies, at least some of them that you're indicating have addressed this particular subtopic. And what I do here is I give two examples. I have Hughes et al. and then I have Brodenberg et al. study. Okay. Now, one thing about this paragraph, um, as I tell you in this, this comment note right here, or this um, margin comment, excuse me, this paragraph really could be strengthened with a bit more development um, because if you look at it, it's a short paragraph. You know, we've got the first sentence here and then we've got a second sentence. So it's a short paragraph um, and probably with, you know, a single sentence added in here or maybe two sentences added in here, the paragraph would feel a little bit more complete. So it's okay, but it could definitely be better, right? Um, because at least for me personally, when I read it, it feels like it ends a little too abruptly. And when I was writing this sample for you, because I do try and do this in the samples that I write for you, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do a really good job with the sample, but at the same time, I'm trying to do some things that don't work perfectly because that's the reality of drafting, right? So this is not the first draft of this paper, but it's not the most perfect draft it could be. You know, I could definitely do another round of revisions. So um, that's why, you know, if you're kind of sitting there like, well, why didn't you just fix this before you gave us the sample? The reason is that I think that you learn not only from looking at something done really well, but also from looking at things that could be improved upon. So I do try in these samples to give you some things, um, some limitations, some flaws that you can look at and that are probably things that you may do in your own writing that you can see and just kind of recognize as, oh, okay, this is something that I would work on too in my writing. All right, so once we finish the introduction with literature review, the next section is that small scale research project methods and hypotheses and see that this is labeled, right? Remember that you do label your sections, but you omit a label for the introduction with literature review as I explained before. And so obviously what I'm going to do in this section of the paper is I'm going to outline the small scale research project or the pilot study that I would be proposing to enable me to look at the effects of food insecurity on college students. And so that's how I open up this first sentence in order to further the research on the effects of food insecurity on college students. So even though I've made that clear, that's what I would be doing, you know, just for cohesiveness, I'm kind of starting this section or I am starting this section, um, linking into the way I ended the prior sentence prior section. Now with that said, sometimes students like to have a sentence or a paragraph to end one section to lead into the next. That's okay, just don't spend a lot of time doing that because you really want to make the most of the limited space that you have. So I indicate that I would conduct a pilot study, so I'm using this language of pilot. You can use small scale study, you can use pilot, limited study, um, you know, alternate the wording that you use, et cetera, that's fine. So I indicate it's going to be a pilot study. I indicate the site of data collection, University of Mississippi, and then I give a little background saying when it opened its food bank. Now what I do in the next sentence is I explain why I chose this site. And this is important because remember that any 
design, research design decision you make um, can have an, an impact on your data collection, right? Especially decisions about where to collect your data, who to collect your data from, etc. So I'm trying to explain or justify why it is I am choosing this particular site versus another. And that's what you're going to see in this.